Okay. Hello, Sally. <laughs> uh, we get this all of a sudden we get this voice that comes over as we turn on the recording this voice is being th- what does it say this this being is recorded yeah yeah and it's really loud and disturbing it shocks me every time it, it oh. does it surprises me every time yeah welcome to over 50 start number everybody i'm barry edwards and i'm merle garrison <laughs> there, See? You go. there you go <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I just got back from JT and Allie's place last uh, yesterday afternoon, late afternoon. And I have some pictures I want to show. Oh, cool. Well, it was a very fun, relaxing time. And um, interesting, as interesting, I think, is uh, JT and Allie coming home. And, you know, the dog's so excited, of course. And, uh, but they were so excited to be home. Like they, they went to Florida for four days and for a wedding, partied their butts off, mm-hmm. then went to Dallas to see, I think, Allie's cousins oh, wow. partied their butts off and had a great time. But they very intentionally wanted three to four days of home time, a staycation. That's so important. Well, I they, think. It, oh, absolutely. So they had three vacations. You know, oh, mini vacations awesome. yeah. and uh, to be able to come home to that warm welcoming with the dogs and to be able to chill before you get back into the work mode. Uh, yeah. I think that's really important too. You need to have a transition period before you get back to work at, at home or at least a day. If you go on vacation, at least have at least one day Two ideal no. more than that. I don't know. Uh, it works out pretty good. I did the same thing coming back from Rio. I, I, Reno, Rio. I mm. had uh, I had two days before going back to work, and it was it was perfect. Uh, the oh, first day I was exhausted from the trip, so mm. great idea. What do we got here? Okay, um, I wanted to end with this picture, but uh, I just put this together quickly. So this is on top. I'll start with this. This is um, I'm going to have to change gears for a moment. Uh, okay. Me. So this is Nina Messina, and she is a friend of mine. Uh-huh. And she's an eight time cancer survivor. So a couple of years ago, I did a, a promo go I put together a GoFundMe page for her and her husband JT, the, a different JT, by the way. Oh, uh, I was gonna say, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, sorry. I just realized that. And um, so at that point, she was a six time cancer survivor a couple of years ago. And they had faced bankruptcy. Uh, the loss of insurance, you know, uh, they had a break in their insurance and then tried to get it back again. And it, well, you have at that time, like four bouts with cancer and uh, your insurance premiums are ridiculous. You know, absolutely. They couldn't afford them. So they went through uh, bankruptcy at least once. And so she's gone through two more times since then. And I hate to say this, but her and her husband have separated. Oh. He actually is going to Arizona. He was diagnosed with something called, it's like PTSD for caregivers. So oh. he, you know, lost his job a while back ago and then had to care for her full time going through all these endless surgeries and things. And, um, as you can imagine, the stress got Im- unbearable and uh, it, and they absolutely have always seemed like soulmates. So he his doctor uh, stressed very um, harshly that he should get away on his own and heal himself. And <laughs> the stress of the relationship became toxic and they separated. And this breaks my heart. Uh-huh. So I'm still, I'm making another effort to try to raise money for Nina, who's still in dire straits and now living with their brother. They had to sell the house and sell their, uh, have an estate sale to sell all their belongings to just pay for the move for JT and, uh, and her move as well. So there is, I have a GoFundMe uh, page for her. That's at GoFundMe slash 518-947-0. I think that's an O D. OD. I think that's a zero. <clears throat> yeah, probably. See how the go, the zero, or the 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 O is in go. Oh, there you you're exactly right. That's a zero, mm-hmm. and I will put the link in the show notes, of course. So if anybody uh, could donate anything, you know, as little as twenty dollars, everything helps. And okay, so back to my stay. I don't mean to bring the show down, but this is a very important 
uh well yeah situation. and eight time cancer survivor eight yeah. time that yeah. is uh i've never even heard of that before no uh, i haven't uh, either really ne- amazing neither has her doctors um uh-huh. and it she has a disease called lynch disease which is mm. just something that makes you very susceptible to that it's uh not very common obviously it- I just wanted to bring up, I mean, the, the caregiver piece, um, mm-hmm. I would seeing my cousin Keith go through ALS and, and his wife taking care of him, uh, was really, I, I didn't know how she did it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how anybody does that. It's, it's overwhelming the just seeing your loved one like that in the first place, but the, yeah. the, the it's taxing, uh, it's, it's 24 seven. It's, it's relentless. It's it's terrifying. It's a I I I I'm sorry to hear what happened between the two of them. Me too. But, uh, I've seen this before, and I and when the finances come into the middle of that whole thing, I can't imagine how anybody can 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 deal with that without having some kind of higher power higher power to rely on. Well said, Merle, in all regards, just the, the emotional stress and the financial stress, as you said, it's like, how does this not happen? The separation, the stress in the relationship. So yeah, it's really, it's really rough. Uh, Let's make a turn uh, because I always say this, but I have so much in my notes that I want to talk about. I love it. Great. So I'm going to go through this beautiful picture right here. You're showing Uh, me, this is what you got to experience on a daily basis out there. That's yeah. I'm jealous. That's beautiful. One of the evenings here, and I'll describe this a little bit for people listening is this is overlooking the lake. And uh, I built a fire up there by the picnic tables and it's dusk. I guess you call that dusk, right? As the sun is setting. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. absolutely beautiful. And uh, this is just a look. This isn't a morning. This is a morning picture. See the wow, log the, back. Yeah, there? I love that. Yeah, this oh, is looking what a beautiful. I hear that music. Da, 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 <laughs> so da, it's da. the rolling hills uh, uh, <laughs> with the trees and stuff. This used to be a golf course many Oh, it looks like one too. Look at that. Yeah. So this was my view out the bedroom window Mm. looking to, I don't know, the south. It would that be the south. And um this is uh uh, looking out the other window out front. This is the lake out there outside the oh it's beautiful. And that see the the fog coming off the water. I do, yes. Yeah, what a beautiful thing to wake up to. No kidding. Wow. And uh this is the crew. Well, this is two of the four, and uh, this is Rick James, the cat, trying to lay down on, um, Be- uh, not Betty, uh, Rosie. Uh, Rosie's the old, uh, the senior dog now. Mm-hmm. We had uh, a change in two members <clears throat> in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, this. Oh, look that, at these guys. Yeah, this is Storm and Norman up here, super <laughs> little guy. Uh, he lives with a little bit of anxiety because of chaos back here. This is what I call her. That's Bernie. She's a puppy and uh-huh. has all that energy, and she's just a terror. I just call her chaos. Yeah, I could see her back there looking like looking like trouble. I'm I'm innocent. Yes. Look mm-hmm. at this. Oh my gosh. What, what this what? is a pizza that I every time I go out there now, th- there's like one restaurant in all of Lodi for the most part, a restaurant bar called Moxie. <laughs> And they yeah. have some of the best pizza I've ever had. This is a I photo mean, of it. It okay. is to die for. That look, I'm, I mean, <laughs> look, it's like 6.30 in the morning over here. I could, I could eat that right now. Oh, yes, you I could. Mean, that yes. looks, my mouth is watering. Yeah. You know what makes a, a difference between a good and a bad pizza to me? And I know I have my unique taste. But, and you could see in this photo why I like it is I, I don't like pizzas that don't, the, the, the toppings don't go to the crust. All the way to the border. Oh, you like you them know? on the top? Well, I, I mean, I like them spread out over 99% of it. I think it's the style called Neapolitan. It has a whole huh. lot of crust without much on it. Um, all the stuff's kind of in the middle. If you, oh, I see. I got yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So this, like every this bite. all the way out to the edge. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, I yeah. got so, you. Yeah. Oh, God, that's a good pie. Yeah. Uh, Storm and Norman and Rosie right there laying together. They're really cute. Tight. And the two uh, dogs uh, playing right there. Oh, and look <laughs> at this view. How did you get that picture? Oh, were, this were is, you in the lake? Yes, in the kayak. Oh, and, you were in a kayak. Cool. Yeah, I do laps around the lake here. That's nice. my source of exercise and fun. But it's just the most Look beautiful that. view looking back on the house. The house is beautiful. It truly is. Uh, they just 
got it finished about, you know, COVID always throws me because I want to say it's like we got a year subtracted it's out like of a time calendar. warp we went into. Yeah. 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 So I guess I want to say, yeah, two years ago, I guess, is about when it was finished. Yeah. Um, and I, I love the weeping willows from. Uh, right I love there. it. it, it They're so yes. beautiful. Uh, the, oh, just really all the foli foliage around the property is just. Mm. Isn't it? Stunning. It's, it's so peaceful looking. It is. So when you're out here in the lake, you feel completely secluded. And uh, yeah. What so do you, what do you hear? Do you hear anything oh, at all? Oh, yes. Tons of birds. Tons and tons of birds, fish jumping in, uh, jumping every now and then. Wow. Oh, they showed me a picture of this kid. Uh, they let the neighbors uh, fish in their lake. Mm -hmm. And this one neighbor kid is holding in the picture is holding this giant bass. I mean, really? I'm guessing it had to be two feet long. I mean, it's what? like it was huge. In I'm this, like, that's in, in that pond. thing. Yeah. And they were all, it's a lake. It's not a pond. That's for sure. Um, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm not swimming in there. I know it's just a bass and all that. Because <laughs> there's a giant bass in there. <laughs> not just that. I picture turtles swimming yeah, around. Yeah, snapping turtles. Yeah. 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 yeah, I, yeah. I, I get my mind going. And, and no, no, no. I'm with you on this mm, now. Yeah, I don't. Those snapping yeah. turtles, boy, I tell you, you don't mm -mm. mess around with those. They will not me cut things off. Yes, exactly. I start mm -hmm. my mind going, and yeah, yeah. it's all over yeah. with. Forget about. We don't have to go much further. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I want to share another thing with you about. Uh, I, I want to go straight in the current events. That was kind of a our upfront. Oh, there's. There's a couple of no, I want to stay in an intro mode for a moment here because right, a right. couple shout outs. Um, are we back to normal now? Oh, well, we're still looking at that picture. Oh, oh OK. I, <laughs> I was all over the place there. Uh, right. A couple of shout outs. I found a five star review on our website because uh, Lisa had been doing some updates. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But we had a five star review back in April that I never saw. Oh, and I didn't either. Yeah, so it's it's kind of funny. Uh, the title of it is "Good Looking Guys!" Exclamation point. And this is April thirtieth from Maybell Early. I don't know if that name strikes a <laughs> strikes that name with it. All right, <laughs> here, oh, here it is. God. It's very quick. She says Barry sounds a lot like Alf, and Merle has a big shiny head. I like it. I like it a lot. Five stars. Uh, I wrote that, Barry. Are you serious? I'm totally serious. Maybell oh, like early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. I thought I thought you knew. I, I did not. I thought actually, it was. I, I'm said, kind of disappointed because I liked how funny it was. Oh, I know, but you know, I was you. It was right after you told me that you sounded like Alf on on the oh, show. Right, right, right. And right, I'm right. like Alf, and <sighs> it's, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Okay, another shout out to Jonathan Grosser. He recommends us, I say in quotes on Facebook, like he shared our stuff. And I don't really know what that means. I didn't know you could recommend something on Facebook. Oh, wow. That's but pretty he, cool. He did. And he says it's it's a great look at life and current events. So that's I fantastic. Mean, thank you so much, Jonathan. That's really nice that you did that. And we did get a lot of subscribers over the last couple of weeks. So I that could be due to him. So please Please, folks, share. I recommend this. Tell him what he's won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you want a free membership to 050. Oh, so what I wanted to say is I discovered your uh, review because uh, Lisa had me on. The, she's like, I can never find anything. I go on the 050 site. Like, she goes, you just need a simple link to go to all of your podcasts. And, well, I thought it was always simple, but... Uh, I do know that people around our age uh, really don't are not as adept at surfing the web as I tend to think we are. So uh, I always am trying to make things more simple. And uh, so I think I did here. I'm going to do another share so I can show you. I can tell you that when I left that comment, I really had to work at figuring out how to get the comment in there. Well, okay. That's uh, that's important to know. So when you go to our homepage, you see it now, right? Yes, I do. Okay. It's over <laughs> 50 starting over.com. You got our intro stuff at the top and right here below that, you see our most recent podcast. You can just click on that and listen to it right there. Uh, you said reviews, Merle. Well, uh, you see the podcast review 
right next to the video. Yes, yes, and at the yes, bottom yes. of it, it, there's a button. I'll leave your review. Ah. Yeah. So I'm going to click on that and then uh, open that up in a new tab. And here you go. You put your title right here, put your review right here, and tell us a little about you. I mean, it's super, super easy once you know how. Uh, so then there's this new link I put down here underneath the summary. So right underneath our recent video, you see all 050 podcasts. And Look at if that. You, yeah, so I clicked on, I'm trying to move this button that's in my way. Okay, so then now you see the new page, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the page I made yesterday. Oh, and that's cool. Yeah, season one, <clears throat> it's all grouped together. Everything on the same page, season two, all the way through. See, I just started doing thumbnails differently. Oh, nice, three. nice. Very cool. And to get to the after shows, I know someone's going to say this, you actually have to go to a podcast. So you don't see the after show separately on this page. You go to a podcast as I'm pulling this up. It's there we go. And on every podcast page, you will find this is before the after shows. We were doing after shows. Oops. But they are on the podcast page that after i show. love seeing these uh these pictures of us in here it's so fun to see when the, oh, i yeah. never know what picture is going to come out and it's always it's always well, funny when i see how they've captured us well i do that and oh you do to be honest i just i do it fast because i got so much to do putting a yeah. podcast together so time consuming and so when i edit the video and i'm getting ready to render it i do a screen cap of something i Basically, I watch your face and because uh, you <laughs> you are very expressive, very expressive. And um, I like to if we're leaning the other way in opposite directions, it's better yeah. because, you know, I put this a summary, a quick summary in. Between oh, OK, us. you're doing that's very creative. I love the picture. I, I had no idea how much was going into that. It's a, it's really cool. I love I love what you're doing there. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. So I think this is the end of my intro stuff. I just want to make uh, sure. I had a couple of things here Go right ahead. that I wanted to talk about. So this past week, um, we had uh, I, my my birthday was the week before, but I was yes. out of town. So my kids came over, Brandon and Hallie, and uh, celebrated my birthday on 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 Sunday. So I'm 55 and this is a big year for me, Barry, because my, my father passed away when he was 55 and my grandfather Merle passed away when he was 55 as well. And, you know, I'm not going that way at all. Yeah. Uh, this is my year of living and I feel great. I feel young. I feel empowered. I, everything's good. Things um, are going your way too. You know? it, it really is. And so just to really kick it off, uh, my kids came over and I, just a little background. We, as, as little kids, I had gotten them this game, Nintendo 64, and it came with this game called Mario Karts. And I remember that was a Christmas present. I remember the day we opened it up or they opened it up and Scott was over my brother mm -hmm. and the four of us played this game and I, we laughed so hard play. I mean, it was it a video hilarious. Game? It's a video game. Oh, it's a racing game. And you're trying to crash each other and, and blow each other up. And everything. Oh. it's really funny. It's whimsical. Yeah. It's a fun yeah. game. Well, that became a tradition. And we played we've played that game uh, ever since uh, in one form or another. Uh -huh. Anyway, <laughs> so for my birthday, they got me the brand new Mario Karts game. Okay, I'm a 55 year old man and I got a video game for my birthday. And I can tell you, I was so tickled. It made me feel like a kid again. Oh, I good. Felt, it felt like it felt like almost like you know you're waiting at Christmas time and you get like the present that you want and you're all giddy yeah. and you can't wait to play with it. That's exactly what happened. I couldn't believe how I re reverted back into a kid again, and it made me feel so good. It was one of the best presents, and especially for fifty five. The you know, cool thing about this game is you can even play it online. So they were like, look, anytime you want to play, just uh, just send me a text and we can, we'll get on too because they have the same game mm -hmm. and we can play it together. So what a great thing. That, Anyhow, thanks you know, so much, Brandon and Hallie. Yeah, what a 
What a thoughtful gift. And uh, what I like about that, we've talked about this before, is that unfortunately, most adults over 30 forget, over 25, forget how to play. Right. We've you talked know? about that a few times. Yeah. You? It's yep. so important. Look, you said it made you feel like a kid again. Look at ah. you guys bonding over all that laughter and levity. You it's know? awesome. You know, when I was growing up with Scott, uh, we used to play that game, Sorry, with my mom and dad. And that yeah, was our traditional too. game. Oh, yeah. my gosh. We have so many fun. <laughs> There's yeah. a couple not so fun times, but mostly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really fun because you can get into a, get a little serious heated. argument. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is a great game. It's a, I love it. Um, it. When you look at it, uh, we one time we got into a big argument playing this game and uh, somebody said... <laughs> It's not all about revenge. And I and, and somebody pulled up the box and said, look, it says it right here. Sorry, <laughs> a game of revenge. <laughs> Boy, I wonder how many, how much domestic violence was uh, yeah, incited. Right. With this, and then dad know? came over the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I, but wouldn't be bonding, surprised. It's yeah. another thing that we forget to do is set out Gotta some time for like board games. Too often today, people get a, totally immersed in the VR like uh, role playing games, video games, right. and they're really addictive. They and are. It, and I think people like people that would otherwise lead very productive lives probably lose a lot, a chunk of it. I'm sure of it. I remember, I mean, because really the video game thing happened in our generation. And I can remember uh, a friend of mine uh, that I didn't see for like a year when these video games came out. And one day I got invited over to his house by another friend and we went in and he was like, seemed like he was 20 pounds lighter and he was all pale and all he did was play these video games all the time and it was like they're okay. very addicting yeah it was yeah. it was a really weird thing i i don't know so so you got to be careful with these things but this is all family fun so it's father's day uh this sunday and the kids are coming back over and we're gonna play mario karts nice uh i forgot to put my light back on i took my computer and everything all over you know, JT and Allie's. And so I had to put my system back together last night and this morning. Now I wanted to tell you about some breaking news this morning. It's going to blow your mind. Oh, I can't wait. Portland's police, the entire riot squad oh, yeah. resigns. I saw that 50 of them uh, yeah. in protest of a fellow officer who was charged with assault for striking a so, uh, in quotes, activist photographer. And this happened after the BLM protesters set a federal building on fire. Whew. Um, boy, or, what, what, what is going to, I mean, nothing or, is stopping these, these people. And now they don't seem to have any real protection whatsoever. I, I, is, this isn't, is this, a, is Portland still part of America? It's a good question. I, again, who elects these people into power? What are they thinking? Why are they not trying to do a recall uh, on their governor or mayor at least? Well, and you know, here's the thing is I, I can't imagine living there and, and feeling the, the, uh, I mean, boy, talk about being vulnerable. Your property is vulnerable. Your family is vulnerable. Your business, everything, everything about your life. That every, nothing is stable over there. Mm -hmm. How how could you live there? And <clears throat> can you imagine if you were trying to get out? Who would buy a house there? Oh my God! Seriously, how do you, your whole everything? You property you're, value you're must trapped. have plummeted. Yeah. yeah, you were you're trapped there. But think about the statement that this is Merle that. Okay, this could this isn't an isolated incident of this no. one person being charged for 50, all 50 in solidarity, resign, put their careers in jeopardy for their lifelong careers in jeopardy. They are making a statement about being bashed over and over and over again, really treated poorly by the system. We're seeing this all over the country right now. Yeah. The the uh, the police are are resigning uh, all over the country, and they can't keep people employed. And the and the problem is, is that now who are they going to use to fill these types of positions? And the concern has always been, well, we've got these bad cops. Well, now the only people that are going to be attracted to something like that are probably going to be the ones you don't want yeah. to be the police officers. And and so um, you know, 
gosh, what a, what a terrible situation. We, we, we're experiencing a lot of the same thing here in Los Angeles as well. And they've, what are we going to do? It's, it's, it's every major city seems to be experiencing the same thing. What about in Cleveland, Barry? What, what is the status of the police force there? Do you ever, everything seems normal. No, everything seems normal here. Great to hear that. Yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah, Uh, me too. Hey, speaking of normal, um, here in Los Angeles, I, a couple of weeks ago, I think I, I, I misspoke a bit about our governor doubling down on mm. the restrictions here. Mm. And in a, in a sense, he has, and I'll tell you about that, but on Tuesday, they lifted the mask restrictions pretty much in general uh, here in, in California. So um, you can go to the store and you don't, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. And so we're seeing a change here. I haven't been, I, on Monday I was out, I was at the mall, I had to do some Father's Day shopping and this was before the restrictions were over. And I really have had a very busy week. I haven't really been out since then to really experience it. So I'm looking forward to that this weekend nice. uh, and, and, and checking it out. Now, Anne Marie was telling me that um, she was at the beach yesterday and about half the people there were wearing masks. So really? that's outside at the beach. And there that's ridiculous. Masks. Why go to the beach if that's how, you know, if you're that afraid? <laughs> well, back to what I, what we've talked about before is that I really believe that, you know, after having to wear the mask here for about a year, it's going to be a transition. People are going to, mm-hmm. people are afraid. I think that's the bottom line is people are afraid and yes. it's going to take time to start to feel normal. Yeah. And we just got to give people that opportunity. I think we just, just be patient. It's going to, yeah. we're, we're going to get there. Um, Tell you what, when you get a, a sniff of that freedom, it uh, becomes kind of intoxicating and it you're is. over it real quick. You can't go back. I yeah. <clears throat> like we talked about last week going out to Reno and, and experiencing that and then yeah. having to go back across the border. I was like, I can't <laughs> believe this. And I was I was fine yeah. when we left. <laughs> I, Coming back was really hard. I loved uh, learning about and experiencing Reno with you. That was that was fun. And I really uh, I very we're fond still of it excited. Now. Yeah, we're still I never excited thought about, about the it. place. Yeah. yeah. Me neither until recently. So mm. uh, it's it's a uh, it's a fun thing to think about. We're we're still uh, we're still on that. So uh, we'll we'll keep you posted on that whole thing. But uh, okay, uh, really really cool stuff. So today is Juneteenth. And, oh, it's uh, that thing. What is that? So Juneteenth, if it's funny, <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> I, uh, I hear about it's it now. now a national holiday. As of yesterday, uh, Joe Biden signed it into law that it is Juneteenth is a national holiday, much like Martin Luther King Day became a national holiday in 1983 when Reagan signed that into being. But what it is, is commemorating. Apparently, this is a very old traditional holiday. And it is the day that uh, the soldiers marched into Galveston, Texas in 19, I'm sorry, 1865 to let the slaves know that were there, that they were free. And Mm. they were the last slaves that were let to know that they were free. The Civil War had ended about two months before that. Of course, they didn't have phones back then uh, to tell them, hey, the slaves can go free. So that's how it happened. Uh, Texas hadn't really been involved too much in the Civil War. So they were they were the last ones to know from the Union Army. And so this apparently has been celebrated throughout the year, starting in Texas. It became a holiday in Texas, oh, about 20 years ago. And um, but to be honest with you, I didn't I never even heard of it until last year. Same here. And um, and then here and, and coincidentally, it, it was right after George Floyd's uh, death. And so, you know, all of this awareness has gone out. And, and so this has happened. So I think in general, this is a, a pretty cool thing. I, I have the day off today. Uh, as a result, uh, Spoke has chosen to, before it became a national holiday, to go ahead and celebrate this as a day off. So I love having the day off. Wow. Uh, I think it's, um, I think it's a good thing. I do see how, you know, 
it's it's funny how it's talked about as a very popular you know uh, thing that that black people have been celebrating for over a hundred years. But me and my family, I asked my mom about it. She didn't know anything about it either. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they, somehow we didn't get the memo on that well, one. But it's always white people that are telling us what black people are doing and thinking. Yeah, and we no. weren't thinking about it. I, I, I mean, personally, you know, um, I see it as a great day for America when this happened Agreed, in 1865. Yeah. And really, I look at it more as America cashing in on the promises of the Declaration of Independence and the mm. Constitution that Agreed. all men were created equal and free and that that America had crossed a threshold. Really, the world had crossed a threshold. It wasn't yes. like in other places that people had all this great freedom. No, right. nobody had it in the world right. until America, in, 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 in also the UK, implemented these kinds of things. So uh, it's sort of upside down from the the uh, 1619 movement and how they yeah. actually say it. Um, and uh, yeah. pretty crazy. So it is, it's today. And, uh, you know, I say congratulations, America. I like what you said about that. See, it's all in your perspective, too, because the, that far left uh, movement, which is always so anti-America, they try to find everything that's horrible. And you can say, yes, uh, black people were enslaved and brought over here, uh, sold by uh, people of their own kind, by the way, in Africa. Um, and that's right brought here. And, yes. So yes, that happened. And it's happened. You know, it's a very young civilization. It's a people don't understand. We're a yes. very young civilization. And um, if you look at it in a positive light, as you just mentioned, that that is the day that these these troops marched into. Did you say Philadelphia? No, it was Galveston, Texas. <clears throat> oh, and oh, these were the, oh. the Union troops that marched into Galveston, oh. Texas to to let them know that the, the, the war was over and that they were free. That's that's so, really that gives me goosebumps. So you and, say that that's an, an enactment of the Declaration of Independence. That's how it should be like the is. mission statement of that this holiday. Is, Exactly what Martin, Martin Luther King talked about in his I Have a Dream speech, where he yeah. he said he was cashing in on the promissory note. The promissory note is the Declaration of Independence, yeah. which says that all men are created equal. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's what and, and so our country wasn't is never gonna be perfect. Yeah. It wasn't perfect when we founded the country. But the principles that we founded this country on are, 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 are principles that are beyond us. And mm -hmm. we keep moving this ball towards that goal. And I remember I had a, a great uh, mentor who said, let's see if I can remember. He said that um, perfection is the goal, but we'll accept um, greatness. And, um, and, and that, that's, we're, we're going for the goal of, of, of perfection. We're never going to get there, but that's mm -hmm. what we need to go for. And we can't, we can't veer off of that path. Uh, it will settle for greatness because yeah. that's, that's when you shoot for the stars, you might just hit the moon. Yeah. Hey, do you want to talk about some conspiracies? Oh, you know, I hate <laughs> conspiracies. <laughs> we need, we need theme music for this. We, yeah, need, we uh, really do. Right. We do. So that do, 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 something like that, but uh, got a lot of them. And just to start off with, how about this reporter that broke Bill Clinton's tarmac uh, scandal being found dead? I mean, he committed setting. suicide. Yeah. In, in, yeah. in, in quotes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so he's 45 years old, found dead in his home in Hoover, Alabama, Saturday morning. Police are investigating the father of three's death. I mean, and you see the pictures of him and his family and they look really happy and normal and stuff. Uh, and uh, have not um, released any further information. I, I, he said last year that he had received death, death threats after he broke news uh, of the secret term 2016 tarmac meeting between Bill Clinton and uh, Attorney General Loretta Lynch. The secret meeting came amid the Hillary investigation into illegal use of a private mail server while president of state. And then I put in my own words here, why aren't they talking about bleaching the servers? Yeah, 
Uh, okay, so I mean that, that's been bleached. The both of both of those two should be in prison still for yeah. obstruction of justice. Well, it, it just goes to show there's a two pronged justice system that's yes. happening here. One for people like the Clintons and the one for everybody else. And uh, this was a, 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 a clear violation of the rule of law. Uh, that that meeting that happened while Loretta Lynch was actually it, her, her department was responsible for investigating the, the whole server incident. <clears throat> and meanwhile, she's meeting privately, secretly on a plane that's been cleared out with just her and Bill Clinton on the plane. Um, and, and, then, and, and then things start to happen after that that are very, very strange. And um, yeah, this is uh, this is pretty bad. And then this guy ends up he wrote a book, actually. Uh, th th that was very popular about what happened Didn't on the tarmac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it, it it what he he goes into all the speculation about what might have happened on the plane, and like you said, uh, he had all these death threats, and he had communicated with his wife and his kids. They had code words so that they could communicate with each other if they were under threat. I mean, it was that bad. So. It's funny how the Clintons, uh, it, they have a lot of relationships that have swirled around them, and there's a lot of death that have mm -hmm. swirled around them. I mean, you know, you can't put your fingers on them. Uh, this could be purely coincidental, but just it's, like Jeffrey it, Epstein, yeah, total it's, coincidence. It's, Boy, that guy fell out the window. You know, like these, these things happen around these people yes. that don't happen around anybody else. A lot of, <clears throat> a lot of suicide. Uh, I remember the one guy that was coming back from the uh, from overseas, and he had some information about the Clintons that he was going to release. And uh, once once he got back to America, and and his plane crashed. <laughs> On the way back, I uh, don't remember that. Story. Yeah, so a lot of that kind of yes. stuff happened, or the yes. whitewater thing, where the guy yeah. commits suicide in the in the graveyard with a shotgun. Not an easy thing to do. Weird right. thing to do at a graveyard. Anyway, lots of stuff like that all around these guys. Here's yet another one, and then we go, of course, you know Epstein as well. Uh, this could be nothing, but it sure is mm. a weird coincidence, man. Nothing will come of it. I'll no, guarantee you, we'll it. never hear about it again. No, uh, it, that's which it. is really unfortunate. It me. is. Got a UFO update for you. Oh, you do? I, 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 I got really a good one. Hear. Oh, I got okay, a good one. Great, because time's right. running out on this uh, oh. month here. Oh, it's yeah. So it's supposed to be June 25th. We're supposed to get some kind of decision. Oh, is that right? So this is from I'll I'll uh, put a link in the show notes. But Luis Elizondo, Elizondo a former director of uh, Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, and this okay. is a, from a Washington Post live YouTube video. And uh, can uh, let's see. I, but my notes are just random uh, phrases. I'm trying to figure out what this was because this is like Monday. I wrote this, but uh, can be from out. Oh, he's saying, so what are UFOs? Are, he says they can be from outer space, inner space, meaning like the ocean, or somewhere in between, meaning interdimensional. But he says, we really don't know that. But he says this tech is between 50 to 1,000 years beyond us definitely not russia china or the usa and he says you know obviously i know he goes i know that it's not us but um we've cooperated with russia to try to crack the case of what these things are we've for decades have been fully disclosed that we both are seeing these things irrefutably all the time so they're working together we hell we did a space station with them you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he says uh, China is heavily invested in finding ET life. They just established a new UAP, and that uh, is unidentified aerial phenomenon. That UAP is what they're using more. I got gotcha, you. Yeah. Um, and the task force is powered by AI. And he didn't explain that more, but I was like, wow. Huh. Uh, so, but China, think about China. They just finally got this uh, rover, their own rover on Mars. Yeah, they do. So it's this. Yeah, these UFO things are not China, China's. Okay, they are well, not that advanced. 
we're, we're having a space race to get back to the moon again, for God's sakes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it is not, it's not earthly uh, in the way that we think. Well, you know, <clears throat> I, I could see how this is really interesting, Barry, because we had that one show that you and I did with the, uh, uh, where Lazar. we talked about uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. Bob they, Lazar. Yeah, Bob Lazar. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and he was talking all about this. And uh, fast. He, he was talking about how he had an encounter with the Russians and how the Russians had come down to collaborate right. with, yes. the, with the United States. And, you know, there was some talk, I believe, during that time about how the these countries didn't know what it was, but that the government seemed to not know a lot about these things that private entities did know a whole lot about. Mm. Um, And I go back to that video. I can't remember the congressman that you and I were talking about where he was talking about uh, another, it wasn't a government, but another organization. Yeah, shadow government that Mm -hmm. could have this. To me, that's something to look into. I agree. Uh, He says they have their own army, air force and uh, navy, and it's all uh, even their own financial vehicle. It's yeah. It's, when you start wow. to take a look at these NGOs, non-government organizations, they have lots of money. They have very powerful people. Uh, they they can they can do things without our any government knowing about it. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 you know, talk about conspiracy theory. I feel like those are the people that are really running things, and we just know. don't know a whole lot about it. And. Uh, uh, but uh, that's just my theory. I, I don't I know. know. It just feels like it. Uh, right. It's going to be interesting to see. I, I, I got a lot I... more from him. Okay, go ahead, Barry. All right. So he confirms that we've had UAPs turn off our nuclear capabilities. So that makes them look like they're peaceful. However, mm. he says that they've also co- have confirmed re- reports from other countries where they have brought other their nuclear systems online. Uh, so, I mean, geez, this is mind blowing. Cause okay. So he says consistent characteristics. They're often seen around nuclear presence and water ability to change directions instantly, yes. hypersonic velocity, low observability, meaning like cloaking and trans medium travel, which means they go through space, air and underwater seamlessly. Mm. Answers are like uh, likely lie in our increasing understanding of quantum physics. And yeah, uh, I definitely would say that's true. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm getting close to the end here. What is the likelihood of getting full uh, real disclosure? He says, well, not much, but he pushes for it. He's a huge advocate. He signed a n- non-disclosure agreement many years ago, and he believes that it's the um, American thing to do to honor it, but he believes the government should. So he's not going to break his NDA, but he's trying to change that law, the policies. And he believes the government should share with the public, quote, the things that I know to be true, I know because I saw it. And so did my colleagues. And final statement, if he has to, he'll run for congressional office in order to change these policies. Hmm. I'll I'll leave the link to this in the show notes. So this is, I'm going to repeat his quote. Uh, We should disclose to the public the things that I know to be true. I know because I saw it. And so did my colleagues saw it. What did he see? This is the thing is that what, what we haven't seen anything. All we see is these grainy grainy, videos, any pictures. I know they have better stuff than that. They're just not showing it to us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, here's another Here's another thing is that if if I am in charge of the military and I do have this technology, I don't want my enemy to know that I have this. So I'm going to say that it's a UFO, (laughs) you know, I mean, that's a possibility, too. We don't I don't know. Uh, there's, there are several possibilities here and it could be that there is life from another dimension or I, I do know that there are other dimensions 
I, I, I mean, biblically, totally agree. that is, you know, the, that there's an unseen and there's a scene, right? Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And and the unseen can come into the seen world. Mm-hmm. And so it's possible that we're seeing a manifestation of that as well. We don't know. That's we a really good know. point and a good way to put it. First, I personally believe there's infinite amount of dimensions, that infinity thing, again, that we can't really right. wrap our heads around yet. But he said, he goes, it could be like, he goes, like trying to understand quantum physics and how we're just barely getting there. And he goes, you got to understand there's a whole nother world going on that we can't see. Like think about uh, radiation, ultraviolet light, microwaves, all of mm, these different things right. going through the All airwaves. around us right now. Yeah, that we, we're just not can't tuned in to it. see it. Right. So he says it could be something like that. Interdimensional kind of skipping yes. in and out. Yes. I, it makes sense to me in that very weird way. The, you know the I mean? thing that's very like, OK, what these things that they have shown us are moving in a way that if they're first off physically impossible. But mm-hmm. secondly, if there were some type of living organism in these things, yeah. it would be killed by the, the, unless the movements. It's, unless it's skipping through time. Unless. Yeah, right. that's that's about the only thing I could think of. Or they say bending. See, we're bound by the space time our gravity force of gravity and right. that, that's where inertia comes from mm-hmm. now bob lazar said they worked off of these anti-gravity propulsion things that he, they couldn't understand and so it bent gravity around he said if you were directly underneath the one as it was suspended it would be virtually invisible to you because it's bending light all around maybe that's what this person is talking about that they saw because i remember having that conversation with you about this <clears throat> device that Bob Lazar saw, and mm-hmm. it was it was otherworldly the way he yeah. described it, yeah. and uh, and I want one. How do I how do I <laughs> yeah. get one of these things? Right. <laughs> that was pretty cool, actually. Remember um, that he said he goes, it's like okay, so we got these things yet we don't really know how they work, and it's like if you transported a motorcycle back into the old west before there was gas combustion engines, they'd finally figure out how to start it up and ride it. They just right. wouldn't know how it worked or how to even reproduce it but you know you're reminding me as of um my brother and i were talking about uh star wars over the weekend Mm. and how Mm. you know uh, han solo every time they see his millennium falcon they're like what a piece of junk that is (laughs) yeah yeah we're looking at it and we're going wow what do you mean that's a piece of junk look it's going like light speed and everything and it's like gosh if somebody came from the 1500s to like 1900 and saw like one of those old model T's they think, Oh my God, you know, but then here comes a Ferrari. Uh, Anyway, it's all relative. Uh, And I'm going back to this, uh, this, these things, the phenomenon that we're looking at right here. And, and could it be that we're some like, like you said, skipping time, are are we somehow getting a window into the future? Is is it possible to time travel? Uh, There's, there's a lot of different possibilities here that could happen. Uh, And it sounds outrageous, right? But I'm trying to think outside the box. I know. And we have to, we have to, you know, uh, the theory about time travel is because people always say, well, of course that's not possible to time travel. Otherwise we would have people from the future here, like proving it. At some point. Well, the theory as to why we don't is because time travel would only happen when you build the first device. Let's say somebody today builds a time travel machine. Well, they could travel into the future to that to enter into their time machine in the future. Okay. Yes. That's the conduit. But there isn't a time machine in the past to transfer to go back to. So yeah, that's, that's easy to go that into the, I, I, I got it. I get exactly yeah. what you I almost felt like uh, I had that um, shoulder surgery and they put me under. That was sort of like time travel. Yeah. Hey, one Scary. moment it was it was noon and the next thing I knew it was night. I mean, it was it didn't feel like I fell asleep. It yeah. felt like I just was off and then yeah. turned back on again. Right. Uh, but you, you can't do that as far as the past goes. But again, I go back to my Bible and I look at the fact that uh, God lives outside of time Mm -hmm. and therefore time can be viewed all at once. And so that 
couldn't that mean that it could he could he could enter time at any time could he change time could he change reality if he changed reality back in the 1500s would i even be aware mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. um because everything would change and anyway so that's getting a little far out oh, right there it but it's but... I, I think it all relates it i know relate to what we're I, talking about here i feel like the quantum physics thing too that that's the that's the key that uh, yeah. that unlocks everything um yeah. all right so from here Merle, i want to ask you if you want to go into any i've of the got several things yeah me too i because i want to ask you because we're on this whole conspiracy theory yeah. kind of I re I got a lot of notes on the mind control America's secret war video that. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I watched that with Anne Marie. Now, do you want to save that and go on to your current events and see in the time? I, well, let's go into this because okay. we're bringing it up. So let's, let's talk about okay, it. So I, uh, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Oh, oh no. I, I mean, you, you, you queue it up the, uh, okay. the mind control thing. Cause you uh, you're that the sort of your baby here. So go ahead. Okay, well, it's uh, there was the MK Ultra study from 1953 to 1963, but I should say the U.S. We got records dating back to the 1930s and 40s of doing mind control experimentation. But uh, I, I started taking notes where things got really like the proof was right in front of me here, and so from 53 to 63, we're doing the MK Ultra study. The CIA paid prostitutes to give Johns LSD so that they could study them. Now, they got really crafty about this. Like, how can we find people to do these covert experiments on without getting caught? And they figure, well, John's with prostitutes. OK, mm -hmm. they're not going to be like, hey, something suspicious here when I hired a hooker. And uh, I went to this high end hotel room where they were behind glass. This was yes. created yeah. in such a way. Two that yeah. Yes. And so that they could study the effects of uh, the LSD. Uh, well, then they also paid Allen Memorial Institute in Montreal hundreds of thousands of dollars to do LS LSD studies on students. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of them would do it voluntarily. And uh, just because it, it doing this crazy stuff called LSD. But so they actually did more than that. They did different experiments that included LSD, alcohol, electroshock, uh, sensory deprivation, uh, uh, sleep deprivation, hypnosis, pain, and threats, psychological warfare there. And so Dr. Ian Cam Ewan Cameron of uh, that university, Miguel University in Montreal, was deprogramming people, wiping out their minds completely to then reprogram them. And this was done to hundreds of victims unwittingly. This is where it gets, whoa, because they, in particular, they interview this woman, uh, Linda McDonald, who in 1963, she was suffering from depression and her general practitioner recommends that she go to Cameron, Dr. Cameron, because he was known, he was like the leading psychiatrist in this field uh, at that time. They didn't know the depth that he was going to. Cameron diagnosed her as an acute schizophrenic and told her family if she, she was just depressed. She had postpartum depression. Yeah, correct. And uh, so he told her family that if she didn't get treatment, she'd be institutionalized for life. So he kept her for five months there. She only knows what happened to her via her medical records uh, during that five month period. She doesn't remember anything. But so here are the three steps that he would put people through. He used dozens of times the normal doses of electroshock therapy with LSD and other hallucinogens at the same time to wipe their mind clean. Linda received 105 uh, sessions of these, of electroshock ther therapy. With Unbelievable. It Unbelievable. is. Number That's... two, there's three steps. Number two, uh, they would program in new p patterns of behavior uh, via deep immersion into recordings. And then three, put them to sleep for two to five weeks with barbiturates, coma so that they would have no recollection of what had transpired here. Linda had 86 
coma days, in quotes. Linda's result was no, ex no recollection of anything before Dr. Cameron, not her name, uh, how to drive, how to read, not her husband, what year it was, no recollection whatsoever. She had no follow-up treatment with Cameron after that. Uh, other doctors were starting to get suspicious about Dr. Cameron and wanted, so then therefore wanted nothing to do with her to help her in some kind of recovery or help in any ways because they didn't want to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> in 1984, Linda saw a news article about a lawsuit against the CIA and the Allen Memorial Institute where Dr. Cameron was brainwashing, doing his brainwashing experiments. She files her own lawsuit along with 80 other people and thousands of others that probably don't even know that they were victims uh, went unheard. So the MK Ultra experiments were replaced by MK Search, is what the new uh, code word is, MK Search, in 1963. In 1972, MK Search and other mind control pro projects funded by the Army, Navy, and Air Force are disbanded, and the CIA director, Richard Helms, ordered that the records be destroyed. Oh, boy, right there. That just burns me. Right. Up, yep. yep. In 1975, two years later, in 1975, President Ford orders an investigation into this. A reporter digs up several boxes of financial records that contain details about the experiments. So that's why we know what we know. Mm -hmm. And but they estimate that what we uh, what we know is about 30 percent of the truth. And that is scary. He says it's believed that a lot of experimentation still goes on today with, uh, in quotes, non-lethal weapons, such as various forms of radiation and energy, sound, electromagnetic, microwave uh, waves beamed at targets like invisible lasers, uh, to usually their head, to make them sick, alter their behavior, uh, or damage them without killing them mm. he believes that's actively going on right now mm. and he says if you see what we've done in the past for all these decades how hard is that to believe that mm. you know of course mm. we're doing that so that that's all my notes on that i just wanted to see where you want to come on god i don't even know where to start on all of that oh. that was uh it was terrifying but the one thing i wanted to add mm -hmm. barry was that uh, through the discovery that the cia was involved in this kind of stuff and not only the cia being involved in it but the reason they were so interested in it was because the Russians and the Chinese were so yeah. interested in it and were doing a lot of experiments on it. On my Germans, country. they didn't want to be let, on the Jews. Yeah. Absolutely. And yes. they, they didn't want to be left behind in this whole yes. thing. And the, so the movie that we've talked about several times on the show, The Manchurian Candidate, is based on the reality that they were doing these types of things and they had, uh, they, they had made tremendous advancements in this area. So yes. when you- Oh, and they mentioned that- uh, They did. In, in the movie. And basically, after you see this and you know what they were doing, the Manchurian candidate looks like a documentary, to be it honest. It does look like a documentary. Yeah. And, 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 and even it's based the, on the exact tactics that they were using yes. in that movie, especially the old movie, uh, you can see that they they really focused uh, on, on this whole thing. And then that movie Clockwork Orange as well, where they're deprogramming this um, this uh, uh, criminal into being a good guy. They do the exact same kind of treatment by by wiping this guy's mind clear. Jesus. And then they try to program into this person another personality. Yeah. And so um, so and then when you start to consider the fact that this is our American government doing things that are being kept secret, it goes there are things I agree that probably need to be secret, but Agreed. then but <laughs> When you really, when you don't, when the government doesn't allow oversight, public oversight into these things, they and do it's this allowed stuff. to keep things secret, these things are going to happen, right? They, mm -hmm. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. We know that. It happens every time. This is what's happened here. Here's the bigger problem is that we also know that by empowering the CIA to have these types of secrets that they have the ability to use what they've developed on us instead of on our enemies. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that time and time again. And right. that, that's why 
our whole country is set up for self-government mm -hmm. and that we as individuals need to be very much involved in the government. That's what true liberty is. That's what it's true hard, freedom though, is. With it, it is hard. With They've the made it hard. Exactly. With the manipulation of data and uh, news. Yeah, it's you're, really you're exactly hard. right. You and I are always exactly trying right. to put the pieces together. That's we pretty are. much what the show is about for a large and, part. And, and I really believe it's an example for everybody to follow is that mm -hmm. we, we need to be able to, you know, Madison, who wrote the Constitution, I went off on this last week too but he his whole thing was that we need to be able to sit down with people that don't necessarily think the same as as i do and reason with not 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 yell at them or insult yeah. them yeah. Um, but but you love people that you reason with you mm -hmm. you love on them because when you're reasoning it's reasoning involves lots of listening <laughs> you does. have to actually listen not just you have to hear them you have to hear their heart yeah. that's where reasoning you have to be curious back and forth you know and uh that's what this country is really built on and that's we, what they manipulating us right out of that. That's exactly yeah. right, Barry. And uh, boy, I tell you, we have to be vigilant and we have to be aware that there are so many tactics that are being used. I mean, I'm studying big tech right now, and it's amazing all the tactics that they're using to actually control us. And, and it's mind control. It's mm. happening. Oh, wait, it's yes. not conspiracy. Like back to the like social a lot dilemma. of people are saying, yeah. right? This is happening. And, and, and on, and every day they're getting uh, bigger and bigger. You know what, Barry, I saw a commercial recently. It was a Facebook commercial that it, it said it had all these young people on there and they're talking about the internet, how they grew up with, with the internet. Now they've cataloged their whole lives online. Mm -hmm. And it says, you know, the internet, they really haven't had any kind of regulatory rule changes and it's really time for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And then you don't know who it is. And then it's a Facebook appears on the screen. And then on, underneath it says that they support uh, regulation changes on the internet. And one of the changes was our electoral system. Mm -hmm. and it didn't say anything else except for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, <gasps> Horrifying. Uh, I don't want Zuckerberg to be in to have anything to do with our elections. He's already uh, mm -hmm. trying to manipulate the elections and mm -hmm. he's got an agenda. Why would we, why would, <laughs> here's what I'm trying to say is mm -hmm. we need to be aware of what the, their agenda is mm -hmm. because we hear these things. Oh yeah. It would be a lot easier and our electoral system is messed up. No, we have to know who, we can't let the Fox guard the hen house here. Yes, yes. And that's what sure. we would be doing if we let that happen. We have to just sound the alarm as we've we've got to guard what's sacred here in this country. Yeah, there's God, there's so much right there that what we have to realize the addictive nature of tech. And I you and I talked not too long ago. I don't think it was on the podcast though, but uh, I I said that I remember when I was a little kid, me and my brother got calculators for Christmas. Oh, yeah, the that's right. Calculators. We're absolutely enthralled all day. We're making words like remember how you do. Hello. Yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> enthralled. A few years later, that incredibly rudimentary uh, video game came out the very first one pong. And it was a, a ball, a, a, a dot that you hit it's back blips. and forth. Yeah. Yes. It, and boy, everybody in the neighborhood wanted to come over and play that thing. That's there for sure. Is a Hours completely we played that. addictive nature to tech. So now yeah. social media, you see how it's made, I, I mentioned, we've mentioned many times before how it's made grown adults behave like children. Um, Ill behaved. It sure has. Hey, did you, and, and speaking of that, gosh, we I saw a video last night of a, a T ball game where the, the, I, I guess there was that. a bad call and the dad takes his shirt off. And was it like tight and everything? Maybe we weren't seeing the same one. I thought there was like ten. There was people. a whole bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like this. It's it's T ball. Okay, it's a yeah. yeah, but it's the I was watching the five yesterday and it was Jesse uh, Waters that was like. They were all saying that that was ridiculous, except for him. He's like, look, that was the championship game. <laughs> Make he's nothing funny. but victory. <laughs> he's funny. But he's um, yeah, so my point is, I think that what we need is the awareness that 
we have to be taught like it is yeah. exactly like tobacco was decades ago. Yeah. And when everybody smoked and it was great and, uh, you know, everybody thought you look cool and let's get involved with this. And then all of a sudden the public health announcement is how bad it is for you. And yeah. so then we deal with that as a society and got better and better about it over all these years. I think the same thing needs to be done with tech. Uh, needs complete exposure and people need to know, uh, you know, they Barry, need to moderate themselves. You, I think that's a great analogy as the tobacco industry, because, yeah. you know, they had their hooks so far into our, yes. our, our government with lobbyists and payoffs and things like that. So, I mean, if we were able to do that and, you know, we still battle that, but, but mm -hmm. if we were able to do that, certainly we could, we could handle something like this, but mm -hmm. it, it does seem pretty tough. It's an uphill battle because the, yeah. the, on both sides of the aisle, they are not motivated to do anything about this because it serves mm -hmm. agendas on both sides of the aisle. Uh, there's, there, there's very few good guys in this, in this battle. No. And our biggest when it comes to politics, there is some hope that I just, there read, is. I agree. I just read the other day that there's, uh, a big push to get big tech broken up. The monopoly is a big tech. Broken well, that's up. what Josh Hawley is actually. Uh, that's his whole project as a senator. He's got a bill on the floor to do this right mm -hmm. now that he's been pushing. Uh, he's He's been working on this since he was an attorney general in uh, Missouri, where he's got a class action suit against Google and Twitter and Facebook uh, for their uh, for the, their illegal activities that they have. And there is a great great deal of them mm -hmm. uh, and and not to mention all the antitrust laws that they've broken as well and they're doing it consistently he's he's actually shown where they're um, and has evidence where they're collaborating together to uh, regarding censorship which is highly illegal and yes. uh, he's really he's got the goods on these guys um, <clears throat> It's, That's great uh, to hear. And he's, it, it's funny because, um, you know, you see these guys being pulled into the congressional hearings all the time. And I get very frustrated because it seems like nothing is happening. It's a dog and pony show. But as I read this book and he, seeing what Josh Hawley is putting in there, uh, what's actually happening is that, um, in fact, the last hearing that we had right before, right after the election, where they were talking about the New York Post and the censorship that was happening there, Josh Hawley actually had a whistleblower come in a few days before that hearing and cued him into several things that are being used. Uh, one of they, they, there's a program. It sounds like Centra. I don't think that's the name of it, though, but uh, that's a program that allows Facebook employees to see pretty much everything about you, Barry. They can look at all kinds of analytics about you. They can see all your messaging. They can see all your personal information oh, yeah. um, and they can use that to uh, manipulate you and do all these things. Well, um, it's illegal to be able to, to do that. It's, it's actually against the Facebook policies. Josh Hawley brought that up to Zuckerberg in the uh, in the in one of the hearings and Zuckerberg said that he never heard of the program, wasn't familiar with it. Howley pressed further. Turns out he did know about it. Um, in other words, he's catching these guys in all kinds of lies mm -hmm. and uh, lies that are very crucial to, uh, to his case. And so, like I said, if you start looking at this, get, get Josh Hawley's book, by the way, I think it's really, uh, really illuminating. Did to you what's finish happening it? Today I'm about halfway done. It, oh. It's, it's not a read that you can fly through. It's chock full of information that you, I like to take my time and absorb it into yeah. my mind so that I remember it. Yeah. I, I've highlighted probably 50% of the book. <laughs> it's, 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 everything's so important. Wow. Uh, but, but get this because here's the thing. If you don't, it's just like the social dilemma. If you don't understand what's going on, you're going to be manipulated. They're mm -hmm. taking advantage of you. And if you don't know about it, you'll just go right down the river with everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have to say there are, certain things that we just can't protect ourselves from anymore but mm -hmm. we still should know about what's happening here to to have some measure of protection and eliminate some measure of vulnerability here get the mm -hmm. book read up on this stuff it's an assault on our freedoms that's actually what's happening 
Well, that's really good advice. And yeah, we, you know, we keep coming back to this subject nearly every week. So right? important. It's really important. It's, it's, you know how we got here? Talk about mind control. Yeah. And that's what it is. That, that, it is. Like, you're right, Barry. Mm -hmm. This is, that's why we got here. Cause it, it's mind control and, uh, and, and freedom. It's the antithesis of freedom. It is. And, um, it is. and in fact, you know, I really feel like as a society, we've actually lost the concept of what freedom is. And Josh Holly goes into that as well and talks about how yeah. the corporatists want you to believe that true freedom is just individual freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's it. We can just be whoever we want. We can identify as whoever we want. And that's mm -hmm. what freedom is. That's not freedom. The core of freedom is self-government. Mm -hmm. And if we miss out on that, these corporatists, these big tech people will take it from us and they'll use it for their own uh, uh, agenda. And they'll yeah. cause us to just be their, uh, <laughs> You useful know, idiots yeah exactly we're yeah. their subjects that's we go. don't we don't want to be their subjects. i feel like i'm living in a an experiment like a yeah. like yeah. a rat in a maze i really do and yeah. we and for the most part and that's the other thing these guys are constantly doing experiments on us and not yeah. telling us about it that's yeah. wrong it's ethically wrong and we gotta ethics. put a stop to it yeah, and ethics mean nothing ethics is like um I don't know. It's almost virtue signaling. It's it's almost it almost really doesn't exist. Let's take the turn to the lighter side now because I have the you. segue. Oh, good. This applies. So remember, we talked a couple of weeks ago about um, Candace Owens getting into the uh, lighter side of things herself. Yes. You know, the mosh pit with Chrissy Teigen and that other yeah. uh, Nicole Arbor. Well, yeah. This whole Chrissy Teigen thing is still a huge, away. no, it's not. And so all the people that now, it seems to me, would be more conservative and on the right are trying to cancel Chrissy Teigen for her horrible, admittedly horrible tweets from years gone by, telling people to kill themselves and yeah. uh, just all kinds of horrible things. And, um, but boy, this is where it's like, uh, you know, the conservatives have been anti cancel culture and all of this stuff all this time. Now they're doing the same thing wrong and in the exact same way by saying, well, they did it and we're trying to stop it. It's so by wrong. doing it. That is so wrong. I mean, didn't their mothers teach them that two wrongs don't make a right? Exactly. I mean, come on. We learned that in kindergarten. Yeah. But I don't, now we're just acting like preschoolers. Yeah, and now, so and Chrissy Teigen has, and I, I don't like this person from what no, I know about no. her. Uh, shallow and know, self centered. Right. Correct. Yeah. I don't know. Because this is probably the sweetest person ever. Could be, could be, <laughs> but not with the things that she said, uh, yeah, admittedly. Yeah, true. But she has apologized profusely several times now. Hmm. And hey, uh, I don't. The Bible says that somebody gives you a sincere apology, you have to accept that as if that action never took place. It's a something like that. We're supposed to forgive, but it doesn't mean we have to forget that that's there's well, a, that's the smart way. to Right, say, right. Because sure. uh, because then we, you know, if somebody shoots you in the arm, oh, I forgive you. Yeah. And he's still got the gun in his hand. Yeah. Maybe you might want to think twice about your strategy. Yeah, no, that's 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 all well and good. But I think when somebody has a bad day and emotionally wrong somebody by saying something harmful, if that person comes back and says, I really see how that was hurtful and I'm really sorry, yeah. I think you should be fully forgiven. I, I agree with you. I think yeah. that our country, ha for the most part, has always been a very forgiving country until recently. Yeah, <laughs> again, that's the point. Ah, that is the point. Well, with that, you suppose we should wrap up this uh, 0507? Yeah. Do, I, do I, you have anything that you more? You know, I like just want to say, flying. you know, right now, but I, I love that we're bringing up forgiveness here at the mm -hmm. end because I really feel like it's a, it's something that America, as we, as we need to embrace this whole forgiveness thing yeah. because yes. You know, the real kind of love that this country is built on is the agape form of love. There's lots of forms of love. Uh, the agape form is the God kind of love. It's the self-sacrificing kind of love. And forgiveness 
is in the very center of self-sacrifice because maybe you are, you're offended. Your self-sacrifice is putting that offense away and just yeah. burying it, giving it to God. That's what I do. Let him deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, how dare I have an offense against you when all of my crappy things I've ever done have been forgiven by God? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Is I, that- I could say it another way. Uh, from my it. point of view is uh, to back you up is if you want to be forgiven, if you think you uh, are earn the right of being forgiven for something that you've done, you have to have that available for others. Mm, you know for- what? And and that's so that's so uh, poignant. And it's the same thing. And like you said, is you could substitute that forgiveness for love. If you want to have love for for other people, you got to have that love on the inside. You have to receive that love from God yeah. before you can give that love to somebody else. Cause that kind of love, that agape kind of love, that's not natural. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's otherworldly kind of love. And, and, and when we see it in movies, that type of love, it always makes me cry. Mm-hmm. Like, cause yes, that's like the most, be- it's the most beautiful thing ever. It's at the God is love. It's talking about that kind mm-hmm. of love. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> You know what, Lisa and I had this conversation yesterday. It's it's perfectly in tune with what you're saying, uh, how that makes you cry. It does me as well. I have a feeling that it moves most people. And it's like I said, like when Jordan Peterson is really digging deep on a subject matter and he's getting really to the source, he gets emotional. And I think me too. as in what I think it's uh, you say, uh, I think it's the closer you get to God. To, to that yes. wholeness, that pureness is why we get emotional. It's so Barry. I just want to say this because I mean, like I said, this country is built on that. And um, I was at this seminar one time many years ago before I really got all this patriotism in me. I had the seeds of that, but I was in my early 20s and I was at this uh, seminar and there was a guy by the name of John Crow up there, mm. uh, a, a, a multi millionaire businessman who was, it was a business meeting, but he started talking about the Declaration of Independence. And uh, he's he's really talking about America and how great America is and how, how what it's built on. But he gets, he starts talking about the last paragraph. And when he gets to the part about the fact that these guys had dedicated their lives, their liberty and their sacred honor to each other. And he talked about what the sacred honor meant and he cried. I never saw anybody cry talking about the Declaration of Independence before. No one had ever taught this to me. Now, I just read this story, and I will just wrap up with this, Barry. Mm-hmm. I read this story about a guy um, that uh, was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. And uh, he ended up, uh, Thomas Nelson, he ended up becoming a, uh, a, a pretty high ranking official in the military. And when it came to the end, and, and you know, being in the military in the Revolutionary War was tough. Uh, they were constantly getting their butts kicked oh, until God. the very end. Yeah. And it looked hopeless the entire time until the very end. So the very last major battle, it's, it's they're fighting against Cornwallis in Virginia and, and Cornwallis has its back up against the wall to the sea. Thomas Nelson is in charge of a, of a, uh, uh, what is it, like a cannon mm. and, um, and, and Cornwallis is holed up in Thomas Nelson's own house and he orders the house, his house to be struck, to be, they're fi- he's having his men fire cannons at his own house. And I started thinking about the love that's there. Mm-hmm. And I started thinking about my own house and, mm-hmm. and what Anne Marie would think if I said <laughs> to <laughs> fire cannonballs at all of our belongings <laughs> and everything. <laughs> and tell you, this is the love that this country was built on. Yeah. That self-sacrificing love, yeah. which forgiveness is wrapped up in the middle. We need to remember that when we talk to our neighbors. And God, yeah. when they have a different thought than I than than I do, I have to remember that this country is not based on our different thoughts and that I need to be angry with that. It's our commonality, our unity, what we have in common. I'm here next to my neighbor because God put us next to each other so we could protect each other. That's really called loving your neighbor. And so love your neighbor this weekend. I think that's perfect parting words uh, to go on. And thanks for being with us, everyone. Sorry we went a little long this time. And if you want, catch us in the after show. See you next week.